So how do we evaluate the performance of a fixed point FIR filter? Performance of a fixed point FIR. And we do exactly what we've done already before with the floating point scenario. So remember our, our design strategy was was usually we, we define a desired frequency response. So that's our our frequency response. So that's here H to E J omega brackets here, and that's our omega and then then we do an inverse Fourier transform and we are getting our impulse response out of that here. So it's our impulse response n h of n. So it's our impulse response. And now remember the next step what we did was we turned this into integer numbers here. So we had the, the h here, h Let's call this here h int of n equals to h of n multiplied by 2 to w, not omega. And um, so that's our our quantized version here. And, um, and so now what we would like to know is how the real response is here, similar to that. So we just so we just do here again a Fourier transform here. So we'll do the fast Fourier transform and then um, we are getting the, the the real response here out there. Let's say that's only our our um, positive frequencies here and then and then we might not get get something like that out there but but something something like this. So um, because this is here scaled by um, 2 to w so what we what we would do is here that we also then scale down this full and this fully transform by 2 to w to be able to compare this with this one here so scale down by 2 to w again so let's see that's the whole idea behind this so let's do this then um, in python and see what the effect is. So I've already prepared this here. That um, so the only thing what we need to do is here. So we need to take our impulse response, we scale it. What we what I've also done before, um, turn it into an integer here, and then I just calculate the frequency response of this here. So in this case, I use the SciPy um, library command frequency z and um, of b. And then I just I just plot this here and I, I just scale it back down. And so so if we have 12 bit, let's see um, how the performance looks like. And and that's the performance of our filter filter at 12 bit resolution. So we see here it jumps roughly down to down to 50 decibel here, and then it's just going just wildly up and down here. Might be might be worth comparing that that with the um, original original signal and so therefore if we if we're creating another another response here um, of of age of our original one and then and then we can also see see how this how this quantization quantization degrades degrades it and so so if I call this here um, a a o for a original, So now we see we see the difference here. That um, here with the with the quantization of um, twelve bit, so the damping here is limited to to roughly um, fifty decibel here, and we have um, some critical moments where it's jumping back up again. Whereas um, with floating point arithmetic here, we are getting this this nice nice drop here, and it's um, obviously working much better. So we have a somewhat like a compromise with the twelve bit. Just to make to make things worse, let's um, let's see how how just eight bit resolution changes changes it. Let's 
and let's just close that this is not overwriting so and um and so we see here if we have um, only 8 bit 8 bit um, resolution of our filter it would create only a damping of um, of of roughly 30 decibel here compared to more, um, to more than 60 decibel decibel with the floating point arithmetic here and so but it's um, it's very easy in this way to evaluate the performance here and make a decision um, about the precision of the of these filter coefficients here.